Hi everyone, Emma99 here and welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to be showing you my highlights on Inline Group P in the PCM 2019 World Championships Community Cup. So it was meant to be a stream but I wasn't really feeling well. So it's going to be a voiceover here. Uh, we've got three stages, Inline, um, you get points for stage classifications, uh, KOM points and sprint points, the GC doesn't count. So um, I am the rest of World 1 team. I got Woods as my GC climber, the climber and Kanga as the puncture, while Langen and Bovan is the sprinters. So this first stage we had a Cat 1 climb. Unfortunately, I don't have the footage for that climb, but we, we didn't really manage to get our 77 sprinter in this front group of 24. It's going to be extended to 37 maybe later on. But we have that sprint gate, so we are going to try to go for that sprint gate with a Kanga, who's got a bit of a sprint, but let's see, 2.5 to go. I'm putting Woods to 94 to get that extra, but I should have gone 99, really. Look at them going very fast. I tried to sprint with Kanga, 800 meters to go, but we're not going to get the points, really. At this moment, I was feeling quite nervous. I'm not going to lie. I was feeling quite nervous. I was... I don't know what to do really, and we have a bad sprinter in this group, Kanga, he doesn't have 77 sprint, and we are also, you know, missed out on KOM and sprint points as well. So, 55k to go, we've got an attack from Pixar. Um, interesting attack, if you look at who was in this group, we've got Lea Flandry, French, we've got three French, you can see they're all, this is all ladder DB, so that everyone have the same stats. Um, well, we got some attacks going on, the 53k to go, but they're not really successful, um, people know, and we're going to go fast forward into the last 10 kilometers. So there is a third category climb, as you can see, 3k to go, and I know, before, because I don't have that 77 sprinter, I needed to up the pace as much as I can. So I'm going 99 with Tarame, and now I'm going 99 with Woods, my climber stage racer basically and going 99 to hurt that 77 sprinters but i don't really want woods to die as well because there's still going to be seven more kilometers after that climb so i try to stick with this group with woods um the kom points is just not many points are there so it's not really didn't really uh, interest me at all so we do stick on that group still 18 people to go but i know that sprinters are hurting so woods tries to recover a little bit of an energy but can it still have that red massively and still got loads of yellow 5k to go and the pace is quite high we're at the back of the group at the moment the sprint is it's a little bit of a downhill about like a minus one percent so i know i have to go a little bit early so try to go with woods on that right corridor but it's blocked by Leo Flandry, so I have to try to go left, but the can gets behind, and they're already started sprinting, so I press the sprint, 1.5 to go, exactly, and we come from a little behind, but it's going to be a really close sprint, as you can see, I thought I got like third at the moment, but it seems like just over the line, we get the win, which was very, very, very important, which got me 100 points. And if I, now after this win, which was very, very close, like four wheels into the finish, it was real full to finish, but we got the win somehow, still got a little bit of red left, but we got the win somehow. So what happens afterwards is that I try to keep, I try not to take risks before, because if I be consistent and not take risks, I should be able to go through this group. Nine people in this group. And I think I uh, the top four goes, plus the best fish out of the other groups. So there we go. Just on the line, we got the win. Looking at the podium, Tanil Kanga, the puncher, beat some 77 sprinters such as Visconti and Barbier and win. Fast forwarding into the second stage, which is a very hilly stage. We have to go for those KOMs and obviously the stage. So about picking the riders, I'm going to pick different six riders and I'm picking the best six climbers. One of the climbers is Schlangen, who is also the 77 sprinter, so he's the all-rounder. So as you can see, there is a sprint gate as we start the stage. 
3k to go, no attacks just yet, and we are trying to use Kudusa Time Trialist to provide support for Lengen to get those 10 points in this intermediate, and Lengen sprints, and we sprint like 1.2 to go, and we do get the, the, t the, the 10 points that we need, so it was a good start. Um, later on in the race, fast forwarding a little bit, I'm fast forwarding too much, but it is going to be a long video, so I have to keep it short. And this first second category climb, the pace was really high. As you can see, that Austria is going mad, the French are going mad, so there's lots of competition for that first second category climb. Obviously, it's important to get points, but I didn't feel like we should go that fast. In the first one as well. So try to keep the energy for the other ones. Plus the stage win as well. Thinking ahead a little bit. And after that. Um, first category climb. The second one again. The pace was very high again. Uh, I was going effort 89 on the train. Leo Flandry with an attack. As he tries to get those KOM points and Austria and France too, I think. I don't know which one it is, but one of the French members gets the KOM points. Well, we just try to stick the group, but I had my eyes on the next climb, which is very steep. You can see on the profile, it's so steep. It's like 12% all, all the way. So I was going 97 already. Try to get an advantage and maybe get a gap to some of the guys in this group plus the points as well uh, and there goes Tarame my climb Rati Mountain going very very hard at the moment um, <coughs> excuse for that um, as you can see the others are going very fast as well but Leo Flandry only with one guy I don't know how he's going to manage that so we go 97 with Kanga I don't want to drop the Kanga from this group as well because you need a domestique in these moments but we're going 95 just try to use that red and you can see nobody really had that red and yellow so we're gonna get one two i think we should get one two and that one and get some good k1 points here, here as well for that second category climb and um, for the next one the third category climb we didn't really have any much competition as there were less points and everyone was trying to rest their riders as you can see can get one 30 percent yellow in the top left but there is a smart move now coming. Uh, I mean, my two domestics four minutes down, they're not really going to bridge up. 18 man left, and there goes Leo Flandry with an attack. He, he tries to solo it. As you can see, there's not real, not real, uh, you know, pace in the peloton. He still has that one minute lead coming to the first of the second category climbs. Now, I actually didn't need to work in the peloton too much, but kind of want to then the Polish team with Doder he's pacing quite high so I just tried to follow the wheels of the peloton try to make the gap stable but I knew I mean Leo Falandri if he passes me it doesn't matter I'm going to come second anyway if I be consistent so <clears throat> these guys in the group they have to do the work so I'm not really doing much of the work at the moment now after the downhill we had a really small climb and now another resting period as I like to describe it but then we have another attack trying to reduce it to Leo Philandry but the peloton not really happy with this he's not he's not really going for it and we have a not 13 man group still at the moment Alexandre trying this attack with Captain Blind he is chasing him back so these attacks were quite unsuccessful to say the least um, 15 man peloton still continuing we have two guys some teams have three I have two so I really need to like uh, as you can see I'm protecting Kangas as well so he has the uh, has more yellow so 6k to go we've passed that third category climb nothing really happened and Leo Flandry has a 20 second gap so I'm going 99 with Kangit I don't really want him to drop but we have to go 94 because uh, after the downhill as well I need I know Woods can go all, like all the way basically so Kangit nearly dies into this downhill I don't really want to fall back if Kangit doesn't follow the pace we have this downhill a little bit and then the last three kilometers it's going to be flat and a small incline so I am going to take the wheel of Gallopin which again Woods gets blocked a little bit there can't get that wheel 
on the right hand side as the Kangit dies. So 1.6, 1.5. I know there's a bit of a small incline, so I press sprint like 1.2 to go. A bit later this time, Leo Flandry. Is he going to hang on? He is going to hang on. He's going to take the win for second stage. We are going to go come second or third. And the picks of it, Mühlberger, just on the line, gets it with his little rider. And we get a third place, so really, really solid stage placement as well. 50 points added. And now it is the last stage. The last stage is a climbing stage, 232 kilometers. We've got two sprints uh, before the climb starts. So it's going to be, I can see it's going to be a much more tactical approach. I could definitely see that. And we just try to be consistent. Try not to... I try not to be left behind by any attacks, so we're going to try to respond to the attacks. But I, I have chosen my best two sprinters as well, Langen and Bovin. So I was trying to get the sprint points. Um, as you can see, as we start the race, just a few kilometers after we start, there's already a breakaway forming. So I saw this opportunity and then I was just trying to figure out who to attack with, which I... Later in the race, I I will understand that I've made a pretty big mistake. Um, Langen and uh, Bovan. That's what I chose to attack. Langen and Bovan goes for an attack. And we will see that Peloton will not care about this 14-man group. The, the mistake I made was Italian team and Leo Flandry's French team. They've were, they were included one climb with that 75 mountain guy, I think. and Which proved to be... I should have done something like that as well, which I didn't, which is kind of sad because after the climb, basically, like the first HC climb, they were ready to hang on pretty nicely. So the first sprint gate, we're going to try to try something different because the pace was so low, I decided to attack with Langen. And we already had Leo Flandry following my wheel with one of his guys, which was... I don't know which one he is, but then Dolder attacks as well to join us. But then there's a team attack from uh, one of the French sheets. I can't really see at the moment. Yeah, the rest of the world two team. And then the sprint, I missed time the sprint. I went way too early. And as you can see, I die 200 meters to go. And I'm not going to get any points from that sprint. Yet. So it was a pretty failed attempt. But we still had the second sprint as well. Um, we're just trying to um, work our way for the second one. This time we are not going to go for it. We, I just took the wheel of one of the guys trying to sprint with Bovin. So we're just waiting for that perfect moment to sprint. 1.5 to go. I go pretty early. Try to go get the sprint points. Looked pretty decent, but just didn't have that speed, I think. I just died a little bit. Early, I think like 50 meters to go, and as you can see, no points for me. But it's now the start of the climb, and Langen has 69 mountain, as most of the guys in the breakaway have a 69 mountain rider plus a 77. The gap is eight minutes, so I thought it should be possible to get some K1 points, and that's HC climb, so there are quite a lot of points for the K1. So I attack because I want to drop the, the, the ones that are not willing to work. And then we got Luke Alkovit Pellucci, the 77 sprinter, coming to work with me as well. But then the other guys also come. It's Rosetta and Leo Flandry does his three-man train. So I just wait with Bavan for the group. Well... Now, uh, this is kind of a difficult situation for Langen. He doesn't really have much yellow. And we got, uh, interesting enough, we're just, you know, trying to keep the pace, really, at the peloton. Now, 5k to go for Call of the Croix de Fer. Leo Flandry ups the pace massively. And he only has two or three guys in the group. He has three, one from the breakaway, so he still has that three-man advantage. While we are trying to keep up the pace at the moment, I'm not going at the pace of Leo Flandry, because there's still 48k to go, but again, upping the pace with Woods up to 68 on free effort, 
uh, while Langen is trying to hang on to the groups too. But now fast forwarding to the end of the climb, no attacks happened. But Leo Flandry has caught with that E2, so we're not going to get any KOM with Langen. While Williamoz and I think it was Cataneo for Italy, I'm not really sure. They are having an early breakaway at the front. So Leo Flandry, he could have four guys if he keeps up his pace. So that was a really smart tactic to do. And which I missed out on while Woods. I am not responding to the attack of Leo Flandria yet because I, I want to keep Terame with yellow and Langan is just going to hang on to this group. So no problems there as well. And now, fast forwarding into the first lap, Call the Telegraph. Langan did his job and he's now at the back. Leo Flandry has been caught after this pace on the Call the Telegraph. So we're back all together while. I was trying to up the pace with Woods, trying to, well, I decided it was a wrong idea, so just trying to keep up with this group because Italian and the French were going hard on that, uh, on this climb, and they do take the points. Meanwhile, for me, it was all about recovery because Col de Galibier was going to start really soon, as I'm going to now go fast forward to Col de Galibier. Uh, 6.5k to go. We've got nine man group. Ghosty, Leo Flandry having guys dropped. Still have Taramea with me, who is currently using his last bit of energy. Um, we're just trying to keep up with the Leo Flandry's pace because I think he's going quite fast at the moment. I, I don't think anyone's going to work the French with Alexandra. No, Cobb. I don't know, I don't remember who, which one was it, Captain Blind, there we go, Captain Blind, still have two men as well, but Leo Flandry, he is the favourite of this group, and he is doing the pace, which everyone at this group is quite happy about, but we know to some of the teams does not even have their leader in this group, so we've done very well with Woods, uh, sticking with this pace, and now three kilometres to go, uh, just... Currently, Nibali for Italian team. Godou is here. We're just waiting for an attack, so just waiting, but no no attacks just yet. Leo Flannery going at his own pace. He is pacing with Pinot. That means he wants to keep Godou for the last climb as well, which is a smart tactic to do, but I, now it's down to 5%, and, you know... Nothing really too big happening, so I decide to go for a pacing of myself to try to get that whole category point because there are quite a lot. I attack, as you can see. The Italian team attacks as well. Leo Flandry not too fussed about it too much. He's just doing his own pace, and we are going to get K1 points, which can be crucial if we actually uh, mock up this last climb and we get a Bad result. Those KOM points could come in handy in the last point. And now we're going to fast forward that downhill a little bit, just recovering with Woods Tarame four minutes down. He's not going to come back. So it's all about this seven man group as Leo Flandry attacks at the bottom of the descent. Um, no real response from this group of five. While the at the back, you can see A2 have five riders. They are working hard to come back at this group uh, because they, they're, they're Polish and one of the teams, I'm not really sure, I think the Austrian team is there as well. So they're working with their domestique and leaders to try to close the gap to the favourites group. So fast forwarding it a little bit more, 9k to go to the end of the race. Call de Grenon. As you can see, no, no one's really working. So I was like, maybe I could pull off a cheeky attack, but... The gap to Leo Flandry was too big at two minutes, and as soon as I attacked the people, they weren't really they weren't really happy with it, and they were just nibbly, as you can see, upping the pace, and the other ones just sticking to Nibbly's wheel, so it didn't really work. I tried to get behind Nibbly if it's if he was going to work, Lukalka, but he didn't really work, so that attack was a fail, really. So we had to. St Stick to the gap. I know I had to be confident. I shouldn't make any. I shouldn't take any risks because if I finish in the top five position, I should be going through with ease. So there is an attack from Nibali, but I am not. 
directly responding to it, but the ghost DM with Buchmann is pacing quite well as we go through the 5k to go, while Leo Flandry has a two minute gap, so it's currently looking good for the stage win. Uh, while we are just trying to stick with this group at the moment, as you can see, Austrian and Polish leaders are back in this group, so we have some competition and Nibali have gap of 20 seconds for now and what I'm thinking at the moment is just stick there just get a wheel maybe um, just save energy for that last bit of sprint for that finish position because I don't really take risks I think I should be going through at the moment if I don't get lost in this group basically so Woods have a bit of yellow not too much to attack so just doing constant waiting stuff at the moment. And last two kilometers to go. All the seven favorites are here as Conrad attacks. I am a bit late, just that timing. I couldn't follow it, but I do follow Buchmann as we're into the last two kilometers. I can follow someone. So I do take Buchmann's wheel, who's done very well to get Conrad back now in the last kilometer. I don't know when to sprint really, so I'm just following Buchmann because I have lost my yellow and now my red is decreasing slightly as we go into slow-mo for Leo Flandry's stage win. Well, we are trying to get second place here, but our red is decreasing massively at Buchmann sprints. We are going to lose our energy and Conrad is actually going to get second place. We are just going to hang on to that fourth place, which meant we got first third and fourth in the third three stages we got some KOM points not many sprint points we got thing one or maybe even none really so there we go this is the group p results we managed to get second place with 214 points pixie got 209 and captain blind 120 so it was 120 but there we go we're out up to round two and now i want to say like the video if you liked it uh, thanks for watching so every like is appreciated comment down below if you like this kind of videos then I can continue it uh, you can find all my links in the description you can contact me and goodbye